yes, we are freaking at the Freakers Ball. Everybody balling in batches. Woo, baby. Now, that sounds like something that, uh, yeah. <laughs> Welcome to the Freakers Ball Show, folks. It is a Friday here, May 17, 2019. Friday night, full moon night. Yeah, that's right. At least according to my calendar here. I didn't, I didn't wander outside and look at the full moon, but I do understand there is a full moon, according to my calendar. I'm going to believe it, because uh, I can't get up and go out there right now. Uh, anyway, <laughs> how the hell y'all doing? And uh, welcome to all the people in all the places that Freakers Ball goes out to uh, on these Friday evenings on the video stream on the Freakers Ball show page and or Vaughn.Live slash Real Liberty Media. Yep, that's where the video is at. And if you're on the video page on Real Liberty Media, on the Freakers Ball show page, then you will see that we have a chat there. And you can jump on into the chat there and come in here and join us. If you're on the audio stream, you could still come and join us. Uh, so depending on where you're picking up the audio stream from, there may or may not be a, a web-based chat client there that will connect you right on in to IRC. If you have your own IRC client, that's, your, that's really your best way to go. Uh, you know, whatever, whatever client you may have, that's your best way to go. If you go to irc.freenode.net and hook on up into Pound Pound or Real Liberty Media, and you'll be here with us. So if you're out there on any of our audio streams, whether that be on realliberty.org or freedomsnetwork.com, rlmradio.xyz, TuneIn, Internet Radio, whatever, or if you just saw notices on one of the various sites, Minds.com or Twitter.com or wherever. The, the, the notices go out to a lot of places. And the, and the audio stream goes out to a lot of places. I uh, see so you're, you're better off on the video stream, but you take your choice and come on over and say hi and howdy to all of the folks here in Real Liberty Media. Yeah, and as one of the... Uh, well, Kate, Kate here points out in the chat that Kiwi, which is the default IRC client on the uh, web-based chat page um, has been bouncing connections off off of uh, Freenode all day. However, there is another chat client there available for you to use, uh, and it is the Freenode-based one, and you'll see it there if you're on one of our uh, chat-based pages. <laughs> anyway, good to have you uh, here, like I said. And uh, let me say hi and howdy to the folks over here in the chat room that I've been yapping so much about we got people people and bo bo bots and bodies as uh, flash somebody likes to say yeah bots and bodies barman yeah that's a bot and uh, we got beetle and cowboy tech and myself and the mighty moose girl uh, we got dc and as mo and beth z and chalcedony mr free enslaved graham z who did her show earlier good show grammy Good stuff. I really enjoyed that one. We got Don C. and the Java Doctor and the Ponder Gander. Yeah, yeah. Uh, Mr. Uh, Mr. Miss Kate. Mr. Rob Works. Rome's in uh, Vanna White Bot. Uh, Vin E. And uh, Weather Dork Bot. Yes, obviously, that's a Weather Bot. Uh, we got the Woodman and the Phantom. And well then, and well then. And Cyborg Noodle, um, not really a bot, but kind of half a bot. We got Gromit and JJ's and Kiss and Smart, Smart like Hans, Smart. <laughs> oh, I like that name. <laughs> anyway, I don't see the Moose Girl. Uh, I don't think I got any uh, text from her. Let me check. Oh, I missed, I missed the message here. Let me go back. Uh, I missed a call. This is not from her. This is from a local number, or a New Mexico number, anyway. Not a local number. So unless she uh, texted me on my other line, which I closed down my my uh, email, which is where I receive the texts that come in through my VOIP service uh, sometime before the show. So, uh, yeah. Uh, anyway, um... She's not here. Uh, I'm here. <laughs> what can I What can I tell you about? Uh, I'm, I'm still working on my garden. It's still growing. Uh, well, the things that are growing are growing. Let me tell you, I've got definitely a bunch of cantaloupe plants going. 
Uh, I definitely got some honeydew melons going. I think some of the others, some one of the uh, other ones, the watermelons are starting. Now, if if all of the seeds that grow for the melons that I planted so far actually grow, I'm gonna be overrun by melons. It'll be like a attack of the killer melon patch. <laughs> On the other side, uh, let's see, I got some heads, some lettuce, I'm not going to say heads, sprouts, sprouts of lettuce starting. Um, the, the, the chili peppers and the uh, jalapenos and the uh, bell peppers have not come up yet. So uh, what's going on? I see it says Moose is calling, but I'm not hearing any sound. All right, we'll just see what happens. Um, other than that, I, I got some... Uh, what are the what are those pots called? They're, they're little peat moss pots. I bought those, uh, and they just got here today. Um, so I'm gonna I'm gonna try and do some more seedlings in those kind of pots. So those will be cool to try out and see how they go. Anyway, hey Moose Girl. Hey Grimness. How are you doing? Doing. I'm doing. Doing. That's good. It's good to be doing. Yeah, it is better than the alternative. <laughs> So, yeah. Yeah, good, good. There good. is that. Right. Anyway. What are you, what are you doing go over ahead there? Go and keep talking about the garden. Oh, well, uh, I was just wondering what you're doing over there. You're making a bunch of noises. Oh, sorry. Oh, that's all right. I was just wondering what, what, what's going on. Um, oh, and, I had to uh, get up and make an adjustment on a cord. Oh, okay. Um, yeah, I don't have any tomatoes growing yet. Maybe. Maybe I do. Maybe I don't. I don't know exactly what tomato plants look like when they sprout um, from the ground. Yeah. So if the things that I've seen sprouting in the big planter, I have a big wooden planter mm -hmm. uh, filled with some good, good, good type dirt, and it's got some little sprouts that just started a couple few days ago. But I can't tell if they're tomato or not because they got kind of like rounded rounded leaves on them, and I'm not sure if those are tomatoes. If something else may have gotten in there, I, I don't know how it could, but, you know, stuff blows around. So right, true. Something got in there. Um, <laughs> no sign of an apple yet. Apple. I, I, I planted a bunch of seed, apple seeds in this other one pot. So you're trying to grow trees? Yeah, yeah, I want to grow trees. I oh, want to grow, okay. grow more. I have one apple tree out in front, but it's like a crab apple tree. Oh, okay, yeah, yeah. You and can it, still use those to make pies and stuff. Oh, so. yeah, no, they're fine. I mean, I've eaten them just normal, and I've made yeah. applesauce or whatever. But um, I want to try and grow these gala apples. Are you, you're familiar with the gala apples? Gala? Gala? Hello? Hello? Did you mute? Yes, I'm familiar with them. <laughs> okay, you must be muted. All right, so, I, yeah, I like those apples, and, and I got... Here's the thing that I found, and I'm not sure if, if they'll even grow from the seeds from an apple from the store, um, mm -hmm. because I I don't know if they're mature enough seeds that are in the apples that are picked that that get to me. Um, however, um, what I find is like got like two seeds per apple. There's there's just not many seeds in there. No, there is not in an apple. Well, Actually. at least in those ones, in that, in that variety, I don't, other other apple brands I've or whatever, not brands but types, um, uh, have had more seeds than that. But uh, those don't. Those at least the ones that I've been getting, they don't have very many. They're supposedly organic. Uh, that doesn't mean that they're heirloom or anything like that. But we'll, we'll see. Mm -hmm. Hopefully they'll grow. And if not, I I, I was looking today on the Amazon there and. Um, I'd like to try these, and I'm not sure if it works for my area or not, but walnut trees. I want to grow some walnut trees. Oh, wow, okay. Yeah, we have black walnut trees here in the neighborhood. Yeah, so I'd like to, I mean, walnuts are very expensive, and I, I really like yes, them. Yes, they are. I, I really like walnuts, and, and it would be great if I could just grow them. Uh, Rome says walnut trees, but he's in the Midwest, like you are. Right. So I, I don't know if they grow out here. I'm not I, sure. I, I, I know we try grow. It, I guess. We we grow other tree nuts like pecans and things mm -hmm. like that. So I, it seems to me a walnut would grow. Oh, I think it's, it would. Oh, well, I'll have to check more. I I only started looking today, so we'll, we'll see. 
Yeah, <laughs> just check it out. Do some research. Well, that's good. Beth V says that walnut trees kill everything under the coverage, which that's good. That means I don't have to weed underneath the tree. Right. True. <laughs> that's true. Yeah. I used to have lemon trees back in San Diego, and uh, they just. There's so much acid coming off those trees. They killed, <laughs> they killed everything. Uh, interesting, though, the uh, orange trees did not. But uh, the lemon yeah. trees, those, those are massive. Uh, yeah. Hmm. Anyway. So he says, it's, uh, Rome says it's harder to grow other food with walnut. Well, I'd put them all away from yeah, where? Yeah, put them away from the, from the side. The of, you know, put them on the other side of the yard. Right, right. And that should be fine. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I don't know if they'll the work or not, but it was, you know, whatever. Like, I, I saw them on Amazon, like, six bucks for three bare root. Oh, okay. Year and a half old trees, I guess. I don't know. Right. Whatever. I love walnuts. So They're um, good. Yeah, they're really good. Oh, maybe she's asking Rome's if he eats the walnuts. Oh, okay. Anyway, that's the, uh, the uh, at this point, the garden update. Okay. I'll probably be planting some more varieties of things now that I got these uh what do they call those stupid pots? I forgot what they are. They're peat moss pots. These little little peat moss pots that you could just put directly into the ground. Right, the brown they're brown. Yeah, yeah. So I'll probably yep. put some pole beans or something like that and mm -hmm. maybe something else. I, I don't know. I saw people talking about growing corn there in the in the chat today and I don't really want to grow corn. I mean I like corn but it's it's a, it's a pain in the ass to grow for for very little output. Yeah, true. You know, you get each stalk is what four or five years. Yep. Yeah, they take up a lot of space and. They do, and they get really tall and yeah. Yeah, so I you know and I you know I, I thought about growing some sunflowers because I know they grow here. There were right. some, there were some growing here when I moved in. Um, uh huh. But uh, again, that's still kind of the same problem. They they take right. a lot of space and you get one thing you know or <laughs> whatever. Right, true. Then what about got, squash? Uh, I'm not a fan of squash. Oh, you're not. Oh, okay. But all right. But I, I could be in 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 buried in melons, so we'll see how that goes. Right. Which, well, that would be good. In, in yeah, in a number of ways, buried in melons sounds pretty good. Yeah, you know, <laughs> depends on how you look at it. Depends on what those melons are. Right, exactly. And who they're attached to. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> all right, all right, let's kick it off with some jams. All right, let's do that. <laughs> now that I've bored the people with the garden <laughs> dock. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man, where is my deal here? Oh, there it is. Okay. All right, so uh, check this stuff out. Uh, it's, you probably all know this song, but maybe not. Okay. Yeah, baby, Blue Oyster Cult. Don't fear the reaper. Yeah, we're always going to need a little more cowbell, you know, but uh, that's just the way it goes. Anyway, before that, we had a band called the Small Town Titans uh, doing The Day That I Die, although he says this is not The Day That I Die, uh, which is followed up by Don't Fear the Reaper. Imagine that. Anyway, we kicked it off with the band called Bush doing everything Zen. I don't think so. <laughs> yeah. So, uh. <laughs> don't fear the reefer. <laughs> definitely don't fear the reefer. <laughs> yeah, no need to fear the reefer. The reefer's no. fine. The, the reefer, reefer, yes, the maybe fear good. that, but the, not the reefer. The reefer's good. The reefer's fine. The reefer's fine. The reefer is not. Yeah. So well, just, no, uh, the reefer's fine too. I mean, if it's you, you, when it, when it's your time to go, then don't fear the reefer. Right. Yeah, nothing to be afraid of. You really can't control it. I mean, there's certain things that you can control. No, need, no need to go searching him out. He'll he'll find no. you when it's when, oh, it, yeah. when it's time. He'll, right, true. <laughs> Whoa, that was loud. Yeah, it happened. Anyway, that's okay. Yeah, so uh, the Grim Reefer. That's right. <laughs> 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 oh boy. So um, let's see. Uh, oh, oh, just a couple uh, other notes on, on the on the garden there. 
Um, what was that? I said just a couple other notes on the garden. Oh, sure. Yep. Um, one is, and, and somebody had pointed or asked the question of how high I was, meaning mm-hmm. in elevation, not in, you know. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, 6,200 feet. But what I've read on several various garden sites is if you live at a high elevation, mm-hmm. it takes far longer for, th- for for plants to sprout. Okay. Which I was not aware of. Um, Me either. But apparently that is the case. Oh. Um, wow. So, yeah, I don't know why these songs are... It's the autoplay thing. Yeah, it's YouTube. YouTube is weird. It's not supposed to be. Yeah, I don't like that. Yeah, so anyway. Um, <clears throat> so also, um, I had about a, put some strawberries in a, a tin to dry for about a week, week and a half now. And so mm-hmm. I'm about ready to harvest those uh, cool. strawberry seeds. Um, anyway, I explained how to do this, I think, last week or whatever. I don't know. Maybe on maybe on the other show. Maybe on the uh Grim, Grim Leftover Show. <laughs> I don't know mm-hmm. where I did it, but somewhere I did it. Um, so, uh, yeah, I brought ready to harvest those things and okay. um, and get them into the dirt. Now, the good thing about strawberries, apparently, is that they have a quick, quick, quick grow <laughs> Sorry. Uh, quick, quick grow time, and so you can grow like a couple crops a year. Uh-huh. Okay. So, so that's cool. Um, uh, yeah. Anyway, um, is there something else I had to say about that? No, I don't think so. I think that's good. Okay. <laughs> right. So apparently Trump, not just Trump, but the government the wants Google to go to man. war with Iran. Yes. Yes, they do. And they're ramping it up, and it's looking like that might happen. Let's see. Um. I hope not, as as I hope for any type of action like this, um, because I don't like war. I'm anti-war. Right. And this is on Reason.com. Okay. Is a you and I don't really Reason. Eh, they're all right, but they're, they're uh, kind of mainstream media. Um, well, well reason, pretty much. Reason's a bit of hit and miss there because they have very right. authors. Some of their authors are really good, and some of them are... Right. Well, really I have a good. problem with the headline on this one. All right. Big time, from the get-go. Just the headline itself is like, oh, what the fuck, dude? Anyway, it's called... It's The headline is, the U- is the U.S. stumbling towards an accidental war with Iran? Okay, there's nothing accidental about this. No, so not at all. Even, even suggest such a thing is idiotic. But anyway, um, tensions between Iran and the U.S. have ratcheted up in the past... Ratcheted been, have ratcheted up in the past two weeks, following a series of provocative actions and statements from the Trump administration, including news yesterday that senior defense officials are revising contingency plans to send thousands of troops to the Middle East to counter Iran. And this is from the 14th of May, 2019. Um, so there's been a deployment of U.S. forces. There's been an aircraft carrier headed there. Um, I don't know. It, it sounds like it's gonna that they want this to happen. So you know, if they if they want it to happen, it'll happen. Right. Absolutely. Nothing accidental about it. So I disagree with the author of this article big time. It's like how could you even word it that way? You know. Well, that's, um, that's how they do. Right. And so anyway, uh, there you go. Not a good thing. I'm not happy about it. Um, yeah, I'm not familiar with that author there on Reason, Christian right. Britsky. <laughs> yeah, I don't know who that is, but uh, I just noticed the article this week and bookmarked it and thought I'd just mention it. Yeah, well, um, you know, mm-hmm. um, last weekend the, there was a couple of uh, oil tankers or, or other and other ships that were uh, mm-hmm. bombed over there in the Persian Gulf. Um, and, and um, they're blaming it on Iran, or they're trying to blame it on Iran, although mm-hmm. absolutely zero evidence of that. 
So right, exactly. Basically, that's the thing. It's these unprovoked things. It's, it's a, so it's, it's just, just another. It's ridiculous. It's, Sorry. it's just another false flag that they're trying to use to right. get support uh, from the world for for them to bomb Iran. Um, I, I read, just... I, Iran's not attacking America or anybody else. No, <laughs> no, they're not. It's it, 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 it's just ludicrous. It's just stupid. Right. Right. So anyway, the U.S. Air Force posts the high, highest quality video ever of the secret B-2 stealth bomber dropping two mother-of-all bunker buster bombs as tensions with Iran increase. And this is a 33,000-pound bomb being dropped from the weapons bay of a B-52 and disappearing into the earth before exploding in, exploding in an enormous ball of flames. So... Yeah, they want you know this is why they have wars. It's because they they have all these weapons. They're like little kids with fucking toy cars, or remote control cars. They got these weapon. They got these toys that they have to use them. You know oh, what I mean? They're like little kids with that like killing other little kids. Right. It, it, it's just like okay, quit making the stuff. Right. Quit making the bombs. These bombs. Quit making it. You know, if yeah. you don't make it, you're not going to want to use it. Exactly. I mean, it, 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 this is how they justify it. Well, we have to have this stuff for protection, you know, in case we're we're attacked. Which because, because this is we're... not the case. America is not America is not being attacked. All right. Mm-hmm. Iran is no threat to America. That's what they want us to think. And they, so they make these bombs. Well, we've spent all this money to make all these bombs and all these military equipment. we got to use it. We can't just, you know, what, let it go to waste? Uh, my thing is, yes, you can. My other thing is, stop making the shit. Right. Stop making it. Yeah. I mean, come on. It, 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 it's, it's, too, it's too simple, right? Mm-hmm. They make, they, they make it way too complicated. Let's see now. Where did where did they drop these bombs at? Um, this I don't know where they dropped them. Because it says. But it says, they're showing. Stealth bomber yeah. dropping two mother of all bombs. Um, right. Uh, but where did they? Probably in the ocean. I don't know. But where? Yeah, yeah. I don't see it here in the article. Um, they just talk about the. Uh, the origin of it. Uh, they don't. T- it's a very vague article, Graham. It's uh, last month Boeing was awarded a an, an, oh, Boeing. Imagine that. Last yeah. month Boeing was awarded a 21.6 million contract for sustainment of the Air Force GBU 57s, which I believe that's the name of the bomb. The yeah. bunker buster is what they call it. Oh, this is a little more than a bunker buster. <laughs> oh yeah. <laughs> Thirty-three thousand pounds. Yeah, these, these are these are those big fuel air bombs that. Uh, Define they. The, they is the U.S. government. When I say they, I'm talking about the fucking U.S. fucking bastards, the fucking government. Right. That's what I'm talking about. And, they. and uh, the, the, since the defined thing is not working right now, I had it working for a little bit and then it broke again. Mm-hmm. Okay. Um, but since it's not working, you could just use dot w a define they. Um, yeah, Rome. It, it it drops 200 feet into the fucking earth, and then explodes massively. Yeah, yeah it's crazy. So who knows where they? They probably test them in the ocean if they have. You know what I mean? Right. Which can't be good either for the ocean. I mean. <laughs> well, who knows? Uh, since it doesn't say, who knows where they put them? Right. I know they've dropped them on Afghanistan before. Yeah, yeah, I've I've heard of Bunker Buster before. Yeah. Apparently, the B-2 bomber first flight was on July 17th, 1989, two years before the first Persian War. So why they fucking make it? But uh, in 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 breaking our um, not really a rule, but. Basic concept of no of no politics. I'm going to go a little po- little politics here. Okay. Because there is a politician out there running for president. Mm-hmm. That is extremely anti-war. Okay. And her name is Tulsi Gabbard. 
Okay. And the article is posted up here on CaitlinJohnstone.com. It says, Tulsi Gabbard is driving the MSM batshit crazy. Well, good. <laughs> yeah. So anyway, it talks about when she announced her plans to run in the 2020 presidential election. This woman that wrote this blog predicted that it would disrupt war propaganda narratives and force a much-needed conversation about the United States interventionism. But she did not realize that it would happen so quickly, so ubiquitously, and so explosively. Gabbard officially began her campaign for president a mere three days ago. When was this article published? Uh, February 7th, so about a month and a half ago. Um, and, and already she's become the front line upon which the debate about U.S. warmongering is happening. Even if you oppose Gabbard's run for the presidency, and I oppose everybody's run for the presidency, but whatever. Um, even if you oppose her run for the presidency, this should be uh, self-evident to you by now. This dynamic has become more apparent than ever today at Gabbard's appearance on uh, MSNBC's Morning Joe, hosted by spouses Joe Scarborough and Mika Brzezinski. It should be noted that since we're talking about war propaganda in 2009, Scarborough turned down an easy run for the U.S. Senate because he decided that he could have more influence on public policy hosting some stupid-ass TV show than he could as one of 100 senators, which tells you everything you need to know about why this woman uh, wants to focus more on the U.S. mass media propaganda than on politics. Um, anyway, I, I don't really want to go through it all. It's a bunch of political stuff. But what I do want to point out to the fact is she is absolutely anti-war. And her being anti-war mm -hmm. um, brings out the total war mongering of whichever fake side you want to look at. Uh, whether, whether it's uh, on these uh, supposedly left television shows or the supposedly right television shows or right radio shows or whatever. Um, so they keep trying to find other ways to attack her about right, other course. things so that she can never get her point out when she's on the show. Uh, she goes on the show to, to supposedly talk about her stances and what she's, she wants mm -hmm. to do as uh, what she would do as a president, but, but they never let her get to that. They, they just they just try try and you know nail her on all kinds of nonsense crap. Uh, she, and they, they want to point out, oh well, you don't think uh, uh, Assad is is a, is a terrible guy, the guy in you know in charge of Syria, um, right? And and you don't think he's our enemy, but we're over there fighting him. Which of course, you're not supposed. The, the U.S. was never supposed to be over there fighting him. They, they, no. According to their official story, they were there to fight ISIS, which is, of course, nonsense as well, since they created ISIS. Um, <laughs> anyway, so if you want to hear about somebody that's certainly never going to be president because, well, she stands no. against the establishment. Uh, yeah, they for real, that not, not, not in the Trump fashion, but for real, no. stands against the, the establishment. Right, um, and is actually anti-war against no the chance in hell against the military-industrial complex. Kind of Ron Paulish, in, yeah, in, no in chance a lot of in ways. hell. Even though she's going as a Democrat, um, yeah, it, it doesn't matter. But uh, she seems no. She, I'm going to start seeing all these Tulsi signs now. Uh, Tulsi yeah, bumper I, stickers I don't know if she will and shit. Yeah. I, yeah, I, I and it's know. it's just it, it, don't waste your energy, people. Don't it's, don't waste your energy. Don't waste your money because no chance in hell. Hell, that she is. You can dream, and you know I get it. Like put them real colored colored glasses on and be like, yeah, man, there we can get someone in there. They'll allow someone in there that's truly anti-war, truly a good person, and you can hope and pray and dream and fucking whatever, hoping for that. But when it comes down to it, it isn't going to happen. Yeah. So why waste your energy and time? You're better off, like, prepping or having a garden or just ignore the fucking shit. Right. Because it's, 
you, as much as you hope and dream that, oh, all of a sudden the government's just going to be a nice thing again. <laughs> and there's so much good in there that actually, that actually wants to fucking do what they say they're going to do and blah, 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 you know, just so you, they'll get your vote or whatever, but your vote doesn't even fucking matter. Right. So, yeah. You're better I, off I, just fucking get well, your head well, out of your fucking ass. Yeah. You you can start off with your vote doesn't reality. matter. Except in reality. Yeah. You can start off with your vote doesn't matter, and then go right down the road to whoever right. they put in the office doesn't matter either. No, it doesn't. It There's doesn't no fucking difference. matter because it, the, the the presidency of the United States is a puppet position. And if you have any fucking, if you've done your research throughout time, you'd realize that, and you would quit this fucking stupid ass shit. This game, the Republican versus Democrat shit, that it's purposely like that, so we'll be at war with each other, at odds with each other, while they're behind the scenes fucking us over more. But but since they really don't want you looking right now at the stuff going on over in the Middle East and 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 looking at the uh, what whatever trade war going on with China, here's what happened today. Democrats. Okay. Unanimous as House bill passes forcing schools to let male athletes compete in girls' sports. What? No. 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 Yes. yes. No. Come on, motherfuckers. <laughs> yes. Yes. Um, Christ. So, uh, you know what? Then why even have a separation between boys and girls' sports then? Just, uh, well, you know, exactly. let it just be a free for all. Boys well, can play however, the girls' sports. Girls can, it, 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 what? Th this is a major distraction. You're supposed to spend all your time right. arguing about this now. But uh, here, here's the story the democratically controlled House of Representatives voted 236 to 173 in favor of the Equality Act, <laughs> which, would, which would require schools to include male athletes who identify as transgender girls on female sports teams. No, bullshit! Wait. Eight Republicans cross party lines to vote for the bill. Oh, <laughs> so, see? The, see? You think the Republicans and Democrats are different. There's no difference. The bill it's amends... Two factions of the same goddamn team, motherfuckers. The, the Get bill... Get it through your head, figure it out, <laughs> And you'll just be so much happier because you'll have this shit out of your life that doesn't matter. Well, it, it, see, and that, that's the headline about the sports stuff. But here, here, here's the bill amends the Civil Rights Act of 1964 to make sexual orientation and gender identity protected characteristics under fe federal anti-discrimination law. So this goes um, much wider... Than than, oh. than than the sports teams, but the sports teams leads right. leads the headlines. So uh, yeah. it, says, it says among other things that would force public schools to expand female athletic teams to include biological males who identify as girls. Right, which um, is that that well, this will be a disaster, people. But, but they, guys, throw, they I'm throw, sorry, I don't give a fuck who you are. If you're a male and you got a male softball player versus a female softball player. I don't give a fuck if they identify as a female. If it's a male, it is stronger than that female. And they can blast that fucking ball like no tomorrow right. because they are a male. I don't give a fuck if they say, oh, I feel like a woman. <laughs> you're still a fucking dude. You're, right. you're a male gender, okay? You you can't change it. You can identify and dress as a woman all you want. Good. But ben, when it comes ben, down to it, you're still a goddamn man. Ben was pregnant now. Yeah, oh, great. Okay. <laughs> See, the, the thing is, is, that sentence that I just read, uh, they started off and then immediately lead into something else. They start off, among other things. <laughs> yes, among other things. Right. It, it, it allows, it's not just one thing. But, but, but in, the, in the thing before that, is that the bill amends the Civil Rights Act to make sexual orientation and gender identity protected characteristics oh my fucking under God. federal anti-discrimination law. So, the, this sports thing about it is, although horrible it's, it's, for... It's, any, it's minimal. It's a minimal thing. Right yeah, now. I mean, yeah. it's horrible for any girl that actually wants to participate in sports. Right, right. But it's just a, such a minor part of the overall picture. 
and and they're not really even getting into that. And no, they're not. They're not at all. You know, why don't they just get, maybe maybe they should have three teams. They have boys, girls, right? Team, have, boys, have, boys, have, boys, yeah, the rank boys and girls, and then the trans, whatever the fuck transgender over here. team. Yeah, whatever the fuck over here. <laughs> I don't know. Yeah, it's like you know. It, Which you know whatever. I'm fine there's with. a reason why the girls start playing baseball. With the boys, they everyone starts playing t ball. It's it's boys and girls together, and everyone starts playing hockey. It's boys and girls together, right? Yeah. Until they get to middle school, and then there's a separation. Then the girls go to softball, and the girls in hockey go to girls hockey. Right. Because in girls hockey, there's no checking. You're not supposed to check. I mean, it happens, but you, it, it's against the rules, which is different than boys hockey, where checking is allowed. And it's because women should not be checking each other. It would be bad, okay? But if you have some dude, like I've seen some girls get fucking nailed by some male hockey players. Sure. It's not pretty, okay? When they're like before they make the separation to go to all girls. Right. It's not pretty, dude. And you just can't, you, you can't mix them. There's a reason for it. It's the physical aspect of it. Generally, men are physically stronger than women. That's just a biological fact. Okay, there's right. some women out there that could kick a man's ass, but that's a rare thing. All right, it's not a normal thing. <laughs> no. Okay. No, it's not. <laughs> anyway, I, I, like I said, I, I don't. I couldn't really give a crap if if a boy wants to act like a girl or a girl wants to act like a boy. I'm perfectly fine with all that. And, That's fine, too. And, I'm and, fine with that. It's just like when you get into the sports or other things, it it gets really convoluted and really fucked up there, now, you know? A answer answer me this question, if you might, or if anybody there listening in the chat that knows. Okay. Because, uh, okay, let's say there's a, a, a guy that identifies as a girl. Okay, and let's say he commits some... Yeah some crime and a cop stops him and, and, and picks him yeah. up. Well, what, what, what jail is he going to? That's the other part of the problem. It's like that, that dude has no business. I mean, even if he identifies as a woman, mm -hmm. the fact is he's not a fucking woman. He's a fucking man. Right. So what, what, what jail? Do, I mean, they're going to take his ass to a man's you know, jail. It, it, the prison system is ugly as fuck, and right now, the way it is, he would go to the male jail. Right, he'd there go to the male no jail. There would be no fucking ifs, ands, or buts about it. He and, would be going to the male jail. And can you imagine what kind of time a guy dressed like a woman is going to have in a male jail? It's it's not unheard of in jail, Grim. That's not a new concept in jail, I, I guarantee you. <laughs> I don't know. I guarantee you it's not a new concept yeah, in jail yeah, that he would not be the first one that identifies as a female that goes to prison. Okay? No, I'm sure he's not, but I, I he mean... Would, he, would be, he would find a, a, a boyfriend, and he would be fine. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> if you say so, yeah. I believe I'm you. sorry. If you're a fucking man, you're going to the goddamn male prison. Don't yeah. give a fuck if you've got a dress on. Right. Okay? Right, you're going right. to the fucking male prison because you're a goddamn male... You have no business being mixed in with the female population, prison right. population, and vice versa. All right. Well, 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 well that's, how, that's my take on it. Okay? While we're on this topic, <laughs> and to switch a little bit away from that, because, well, I assume I didn't even think about that, but these guys, well, people, are going to prison. They're going to prison. Mm -hmm. they're, there's no, they're already in lockup somewhere. I don't know right. where. Uh, however... Last week, there was a shooting up in Colorado at what they call a STEM school. Yeah. Okay. Science, technology, blah, blah, blah. All right. One of the people was a man or a male. Mm -hmm. and, 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 oh, great, okay, sorry, talk about it. Uh, and, and the other one is a female that thinks she's a male. Okay, see, I could tell that by looking at her face. Okay. I knew it was a girl. I, I could. All right. Okay, but here's the thing. I could. I could tell. I, I, I studied her long enough, and I could tell that was a girl. Uh, th this article posted on Infowars.com mm -hmm. today by Paul Joseph Watson yesterday. Public, the public has been banned from seeing school shooting case involving transgender anti-Trump culprit. Why? The entire case file is sealed by the judge. 
Oh my fucking god! But, uh, Could uh, they be more obvious? Uh, the, the, well, uh, and of course, Joseph Watson. He's a like a Republican idiot. Mm -hmm. um, and who knows? Anyway, whatever. The, the case of two anti-Trump leftists, one of whom is transgender, who shot up a school in Denver last week. Supposedly. Whatever. Um, has been placed under seal by a judge banning the public from seeing it. Uh, That's Devon, bullshit. Devon Erickson, 18, and Alec McKinney, 16, opened fire on two classrooms in science, technology, engineering, math, STEM, uh, charter school in Highlands Ranch, Colorado, on May 7th, killing one student and injuring eight others. Uh, the 16-year-old Alec McKinney identifies as a male, but is biologically a female, having been born Maya Elizabeth Kennedy. Kimmy. Yeah, okay. Kimmy. Uh, the, the, following the shooting, it emerged that his accomplice, Erickson, had posted anti-Christian and anti-Trump messages on social media while praising uh, Obama. Um, <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> well, whatever. It, it Sorry. Is it is now being reported the details of the case will remain secret to the public after it was sealed by the judge. Uh, the Doug Douglas County District Judge Teresa Slade has put the charges, the charges, and the entire case file under seal. So we don't even know what they're charged with. No, uh, we don't. We're the, not gonna know, probably. No, we're not. It's all under seal. The student who was shot dead, 18-year-old Kendrick Castillo, bravely rushed the two shooters. In an, in, in, which I saw what this guy did, and he was he, he he did do a really good thing. This 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 guy, this kid. Mm -hmm. Uh, yeah, he he died for it, but uh, yeah, he did. So he, you know, whatever. So th the shooting appeared to disappear from headlines quickly when it turned out the individuals were respon responsible were anti-Trump leftists, and one of them was transgender. Uh, so it not only did it disappear from headlines, but uh, it's disappeared from uh, any chance you may have ever had to to see. Well, I don't know about ever, but. At least until the case is done, probably. You know. Yeah. Just, yeah. So it, it's it, it it's it's uh, it's highly fishy, uh, and well, Ed points out or states, and I don't know if it's true or not, but I imagine it is, um, that Paul Joseph Watson is a Jewish supremacist, which I didn't even think he was Jewish. <laughs> he's a British guy. I, I know he's British, or at least he has a British voice. <laughs> Where's it, Jackson? Bring it. So, uh, anyway, it's all ridiculous stuff. Um, but, well, it doesn't, I, I mean, it doesn't even seem like it's, it's legal for them to just seal up a case like that. No, it doesn't. But, but they, apparently, I guess they can. Yeah, I guess so, yeah. So, uh, so much for transparency or whatever. Right. I mean, why why this one? All the other ones, they don't do this. The one in Florida, they didn't do that. No, I know. The, you know, the, yeah. why? Well, it's up to a particular judge, I suppose, but... Right. You know, whatever. Yeah. Anyway, let's play some more music here. All right, let's do that. All right, these came out, um, well, this morning, Kate started posting some, and I found this particular track uh -huh. here, that recorded yeah. last night. Ooh, at the Royal Albert Hall. Fresh, 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 fresh. Oh, yeah. This is Eric Clapton. Crossroad, nice. Crossroad Blues. All right. Park at the moon. <laughs> yeah, it's uh, um, Ozzy Osbourne there with Bark at the Moon uh, with scenes from the movie American Werewolf in London on that, this Full Moon Freakers Friday. Yes, indeed. Uh, before that, we had Big Head Todd and the Monsters doing Boom Boom. And we kicked it off with Eric Clapton doing Crossroad Blues there from the Royal Albert Hall last night. Of course, with Doyle, not of course, but with Doyle Bramall, too, sitting in uh, with him there. So great, great, great show. There's a bunch of clips up there from uh, that concert. On YouTube, if you want to see more clips from the Eric Clapton show. Yeah. And um, I, I find it weird that so, so many folks are getting buffering, because I, I monitor the video stream on my other machine. Um, muted, but 
I, I do monitor it, and I haven't seen any buffering whatsoever. Um, so I have. I mean, I've had. Uh, well, it's not a just you. Cowboy Jack is stopped. The, stopped playing, but yeah, it's not just buffering. you though. It's not just you. Cowboy Tech's repeated it, or said the same thing, and Kate right. said the same thing. So it's obviously buffering for several people. Um, huh. But uh, yeah, I, I don't know. I, I, I don't. I don't know why that would be. Um, because, like I said, I'm 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 watching it. I'm keeping an eye on it. And... Yeah. Well, what do you think? Okay, so you? this is what I looked up here. Just quick. Twenty-five full moon fact myths and facts you might not know. And this is from three years ago, but that's okay. Okay. The moon has always had its mystical place in people's cultures all over the world, but there is a certain lunar phase that is particularly fascinating to humans: the full moon. Okay. From the scientific point of view, the full moon is a lunar phase that occurs when the moon is completely illuminated as seen from the Earth as it is placed in complete opposition to the sun, or in other words, it's on the opposite side of the Earth from the sun. Right. Okay. I knew that. Actually. Occurring approximately every 29.5 days, the full moon has always been associated with a number of myths, lesson, legends, eerie stories, and superstitions. Over the past decades and centuries, this mystical phenomenon has been studied and explored by many experts, scientists, astronomers, and other scholars, but a vast majority of these studies have found no connections between the full moon and human behavior or life on Earth in general. Yet, the phrase, quote, it must be a full moon, is still frequently used when some unusual things happen. If you see, if you are one of these those interested in this mystic, mysterious lunar phase, Keep on reading because the article features 25 full movements and facts you might not know. Okay. Anyway, uh, I'm not going to read them all because it would be really well, long. I mean, I could probably read a few of them, but okay, here's one. Number 21. It is sometimes claimed that surgeons used to refuse to operate during the full moon because of an increased, increased risk of death of the patient through blood loss. A study carried out in Barcelona found a statistically significant correlation between lunar phase and hospital admissions due to gastrointestinal bleeding. That's weird. Right. Let's see if there's any other weird, weird ones here. It says the full moon is considered unlucky if it occurs on a Sunday, but lucky if it occurs on a Monday. <laughs> <laughs> All right. What about on a Friday? Right. Yeah. In fact, the name of Monday is derived from Old English moon and dog and Middle English mun and day, which means moon day. Uh, the full moon has been thought to cause insanity and even become more famously lycanthropy. One of the more popular beliefs was, was that a man or a woman could be turned into a werewolf if he or she, on a certain Wednesday or Friday... <laughs> slept outside on a summer night with the full moon shining directly on his or her face. Okay. <laughs> okay. Uh, the Royal Air Force uh, used the light emitted by the full moon to attack, uh, launch their attack on a German city of Lubeck during World War II on Saturday night, March 28th. Dogs are known to bark and howl more during the full moon, but they might also be more aggressive. A study oh. carried out by the Bradford Royal Infirmary a hospital in the UK found that dog bites are up to twice as common during a full moon than on other nights. Okay. So there you go. There's more things. Let's see if we can find any other weird things. Don't piss off any dogs during a full moon. Right. Uh, it says it has been suggested that the full moon affects humans in the same way as it does to the oceans via the tidal force, as the human body is about 75% water. But in fact, the tidal effect is totally ins insignificant on such a small scale, which I don't agree. I think it's significant. But um, doo -doo -doo. what else here? When the moon full moon coincides with the total lunar eclipse, it appears red, and this phenomenon known as the red moon, the only light seen is refracted through the Earth's shadow. This light looks red for the same reason that the sunset looks red. Day to ray light. Due to Rayleigh scattering of more blue blue light. Uh, it says the full moon was believed to make people go crazy. The word lunatic was actually was used to describe a person who was considered mentally ill, dangerous, foolish, or unpredictable. Conditions once attributed to lunacy. 
The word derives from the Latin word luna, lunaticus, meaning moonstruck. So luna, luna meaning moon, lunatic. Right, right, right. Makes sense. Some wild animals behave differently during a full moon. For example, lions usually hunt at night, but after a full moon, they're more likely to hunt during the day, likely to make up for the tough going on a moonlit night. Okay. Uh, the full moon is often associated with a higher occurrence of strange things, but this, this belief is probably a misconception. People have this feeling because they pay better attention to unusual things during the full moon. In fact, strange things happen during the rest of the month, too, but pe people usually don't tie them to celestial events. But the moon does have an effect on people. So, and obviously, the, the if it's a full moon, it could have more of an odd effect on people. Right. I believe it does affect people. Sure. Definitely. I do. So, let me go to the first page where it has number one. Let's see here. The honeymoon is named after a full moon in June, as it fell between the planting and harvesting of crops. This was traditionally the best month to get married. Okay. Uh, full moon <laughs> just takes it. Wait. Sri as, Lanka, let as, has as, it that, as, uh, as if, as what? if there's a good month to get married. What is? I said, as if there's actually a good month to get married. Exactly. There's no good month to do that. <laughs> there's no good well, year. There's no, we're clear on that. There's no good lifetime to get married. <laughs> no. No good time, place, shape, or form. Uh, okay. Full moons are sacred in Sri Lanka. Legend has it that Buddha's birth, birth, enlightenment, and passing to nirvana occurred on full moons. On a full moon night, shops are closed, alcohol is not served, no sports matches can be played, and any killing, including fishing, is forbidden. Number three, pagans believe the most mystical time at Stonehenge is when the full moon wanes, leaving the earth to be reunited with her lover, the sun, at dawn. Although a full, Number two, although a full moon has not been proved to directly affect our mental state, 80% of nurses and 63% of doctors said they saw more patients with mental health problems during a full moon than any other time. The survey was carried out at the University Laval in Quebec City, Canada. And it says this, number one, it is, a mo it is a common misconception that the first Apollo landing occurred during a full moon. This did not occur until more than a week later. It actually never occurred. It occurred but yeah, it never occurred, so <laughs> that's a whole that's a whole different story. <laughs> yes. Oh, that's great. So there you go. You know, it's a full moon, so I thought I'd look it up, you know. Yeah, no, that's I great. do yeah. What? And and uh this moon oh I think I didn't have a story. Hang on, okay. let me see here. Um let's see here. I I thought I marked a story about what this moon was called. And uh, let's see here. Da, 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 da. Let's see here. Twitter. Oh, Scorpio. The Scorpio moon. Um, oh, that's what it's called. Yeah, it's it's the, the Scorpio full moon. Uh -huh. um, let's see. It says here the. Uh, let's see. Uh, wouldn't it be an emotional purge feel great right now? Um, don't really need one, but thanks. Um, <laughs> <laughs> one one certainly overdue. What with the relentless <laughs> reshaping lately of so many givens? Da, da, da. Oh, whatever. I, I don't need to, re to really. Uh, show, where's your link? Give me your link too. Um, no, most. Yes. Yeah, give me your link too. Oh, the link. Oh, yeah, yeah. yeah. But uh, yeah, all, all you really need to know is it's called the Scorpio full moon. Okay. The full moon is doing a tango with Scorpio's ruler, Pluto, the cosmic agent of unavoidable change and guardian of hidden secrets, obsessions, phobias, terrors, crimes, treasures. His contact to the Taurus sun has put us through the Phoenix moments this week, and if the evolutionary surge has gone under your radar, give a thought to your current sense of yourself and how that's different from last year and last month and last week. <laughs> so, uh, we got any Scorpios here? Um, Not me. Uh, is this, I don't even know, is this, is this a Scorpio um, 
Are, are, are Scorpios is this their month? Uh, no, it's October twenty third and November twenty second. Okay, so I don't know why this is the Scorpio moon if it's not even their month, but not sure. Um, in a, in regular astrology, that's what it is, though. Okay, well, no, but moon moon stuff is obviously a little different, so. Right. Uh, right. Anyway, if you want to read the balance of that, here here's the link to it. The links, all these links, by the way, as I've mentioned uh, on every other show, um, uh -huh. will be in the post-show blog tomorrow. Right. So <laughs> if you miss anything in the show, you can always come back to reallibertymedia.com and find what you missed. Yeah, yeah. So, so okay, yeah. there you go. Yeah, so October, November is Scorpio. All right. Uh, I, so why, why this is Scorpio full moon? Maybe it says in the article... I didn't read all the way through it. I just wanted to get something that said what the hell this moon was. <laughs> okay. And here's another thing that happened recently. Okay. And you probably talked about it, but I don't know. We'll see. This is from May 8th, 2019. All right. Denver votes to decriminalize magic mushrooms. An unofficial oh, no, result. I haven't read that yet, but I do have an article bookmarked okay. for it. Which, okay, so it's been proven, and we've talked about this before. That quote unquote magic mushrooms cure depression or can help with curing depression. Mm -hmm. So they're not bad for you. Um, okay. And now Denver has decriminalized magic mushrooms. All right. And I have, and, 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 which is, well, decriminalized, not legalized. Um, right. Decriminalized, yeah. not legalized, right. Yeah. Uh, but I do have an a, uh, article about not necessarily. Magic mushrooms, but magic mushrooms are included in mm -hmm. the mix. <laughs> okay. So yeah, if you live in Denver, uh, you can probably go ahead and and, and shroom up without right. too, much, too much of a problem because they said it was going to be their lowest priority as far as harassing people over That's shrooms. That's good to know. Yeah. So you know, well, yeah, if they're you know sitting in one of the pot bars or whatever, you can have some shrooms too and be okay with it. Okay. This cool. art, what? I said cool. Yeah, cool. So this article, which is important to certain people that may have a problem, and this talks about a specific one, but mm -hmm. it also applies to other addictive situations you may be in. Okay. Psychedelics' role in beating alcoholism illustrated hmm. in LSD psilocybin study. Okay. There is incredible potential here. Okay. This is on uh, inverse inverse.com. Yeah. Um, in the 50s through the 70s, psychedelic drugs were studied for their potential to help people stop problematic drinking. At the time, the research primarily focused on the effects of LSD, which seemed to help curb alcohol, albeit not consistently. Now, after the 50-year research hiatus necessitated by government jackbooted thugs, I mean, uh, by the drug's illegal status, scientists are once again finding psychedelics like LSD as well mm -hmm. as psilocybin to be useful tools in fighting addiction. And research... Nice. Yeah, it, it, it starts off with alcohol, but you can apply mm -hmm. this to other... Addic oh, sure. Addiction. Mass, heroin, whatever. Cigarettes, whatever. Um, yeah, cigarettes, yep. Yeah, any, anything that you're, you know, whatever. Whatever kind of addictive mm -hmm. thing you're doing. Um, once you actually get in touch with yourself via the hallucinogenics, you're going to find that you're um, better suited to deal with those addictions. Anyway, right. Uh, Matthew Johnson, Ph.D., an associate professor at Johns Hopkins, uh, tells Inverse that this work is a thread that was left dangling from the earlier era of research. In the paper, Johnson and colleagues present evidence that psychedelics can lead to reduction, not do, but can, and sometimes complete cessation of problematic alcohol use. Uh, mm -hmm. So to gather their data, the team recruited participants through social media and websites devoted to drug discussion research, including the Arrowhead Center and Multidiscipline Associ Association for Psychedelic Studies, 
They have, a, they have a place. It's a multidisciplinary association for psychedelic studies. See, I, if I would have known that existed, I'd have been working there. Anyway, uh, <laughs> through anonymous online surveys, they collected data, 343 participants, who were predominantly white, male, and American, and importantly, had reported at least seven years of problematic drinking before they had a psychedelic experience. Of the 72% that met the criteria for the alcohol use disorder, and 74% reported they had used LSD or psilocybin, the psychoactive molecule in magic mushrooms, out of those who took the drug, 62% were looking for a spiritual experience or wanted to explore the psychological state. Just 10% of the group took the drugs with the hope that they could get help uh, or that it could help them reduce their reliance on alcohol. But as it turns out, the majority of the participants still experienced a change in their drinking habits after taking the drugs. So, um, anyway, there's, there's, there's a bunch of good information there in, in the article, and, and uh, I'll, I'll let you read through it, but um, just bear in mind that not only will hallucinogenics help with your addictions, it'll help in many other ways in your life. Yes, um, it I, opens I, your <coughs> mind. I strongly recommend uh -huh. that everybody should at least once in their life yes. have the LSD. Yeah. Everybody that's that at everybody. least at least everybody that's already mentally stable. If you're if right. you're not if you're right. not if you're not mentally stable you, you probably Maybe don't. not a good idea. Yeah, and, and you want to be in a good, safe, quiet, isolated environment. You don't. You don't want to do these out at a, in a crowd, at least not your first time or two. Um, no, after, no, after, after no. you are. You want to be like in a, yeah. Yeah, after after you're experienced, then you, you you'll probably feel free to venture out more. Right, but, but um, the first time or yeah. two, no. Because because you trying to explain somebody what it's like. To, it's hard to, to have. Do that. The, it's impossible. They 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 will never understand. No. Until they have actually taken the LSD themselves. Right. Mushrooms are great, but they're, they're yep. different. But they're so different than LSD. Yeah, they're different. And, and it's, I, the same, it's the same type of theory, but it's a different feeling. Yeah, and, and, and you know, mushrooms are great, and, and you can... They are. They're fun. I love mushrooms. And, and you could probably do those on, on your own from time to time. Um, right. With, without too much problem. But the LSD, that's... Yeah, yeah. And, and if you do have other people there with you, you probably want at least one other person your first time. Is somebody, a friend. Somebody a trusted that you friend. Totally trust. Somebody yes. that's not gonna fuck with you while you're, you're exactly while someone you're that's fucking. got your back, someone that's your buddy. So, somebody that's not an uh, asshole. <laughs> you, you don't you don't want assholes fucking with you the first time you take LSD and you're peeking. That, right. That's exactly. It. But the, you know people do that. <laughs> you can get very emotional. I I mean I it's happened to me while on shrooms and on LSD where I've gotten very emotional. Yeah. Because, you know, it just, it, it can affect you that way yeah. sometimes, yeah. you know. Right. Not often, but it's happened a couple of times yeah, where, you know, you know, it's like, oh, okay. <laughs> I right. wasn't expecting that reaction, but I'm going, you know what I mean? But you can certainly introduce yourself to yourself. Sure. Yeah. And it, what it's great for is under, getting to know your you. Yeah. Yourself, it's it, it's the be it's that's probably the best thing. Yeah, that it yeah. does. It's, it's a exploration of your inner self. Right. So uh, anyway, well, we're gonna play some more music here. Okay. Um, and, and then we'll come back and I I got an interesting story that wasn't sure I was gonna do on this show, but I think I will. Oh, okay. So, Sounds good. Yeah. Alrighty All then. Right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We're gonna kick it off with a cowboy tech request. Ooh. Yeah. Okay, enjoy people. Absolutely. Thank you very much. And thank you, Willie. Yeah, there you go, Willie Nelson. 
roll me up and smoke me when I die. Hey, most girl request there. Uh, before that, we had George, a thoroughgood of the Delaware Destroyers, with Elvin Bishop sitting in out there in New Jersey at the Capitol Theater back in 1984, doing one bourbon, one scotch, and one beer. And we kicked it off with a cowboy tech request, ACDC, hey, rock and roll, ain't noise pollution. <laughs> oh, what great uh, variety and excellent music on that particular set. So, uh, yeah, yeah. Yeah. I am not starting a commune and quit. No, no. Quit, I'm trying to clue them in here. Quit, quit, quit spreading but, rumors. Right, <laughs> yeah, don't be talking shit now. If you show up here looking for a commune, you will be greatly disappointed. Yes. Because <laughs> it ain't happening. <laughs> yeah, no, that's not happening. He'll tell you to get off his lawn. You better listen, because if you don't, you're not going to like it. You're not going to like it. You you're will, not going to like will, the result of that. You, you, will, you will be... Have, have, have <laughs> buckshot. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, at least birdshot. Uh, I'll, I'll, I won't hit you with a double lot. Not right away. Right? If, they, if they try to come in the door, then then then. <laughs> right. right. Yeah. All, all, all bets are off at that point. <laughs> <laughs> right. Oh man. Yeah, I wouldn't be messing with that. Yeah. Yeah. Even the bird shot will leave leave a pretty decent problem. No, he takes showers often. He's not. He's not a total. I shower. Uh, I shower daily. Yeti. <laughs> He's not a total yeti. <laughs> <laughs> oh God. <laughs> but yeah. Um, so speaking of things, let me see what else I had bookmarked here. Just a second. I bookmarked this one thing today. Okay. Which I thought was interesting, and I know it's from Natural News, and I know you don't really care for that site, Graham, but I just saw it. I'm like, okay, yeah, I'm going to just yeah. share it. I'm going it, to. It's interesting. The headline grabbed me. It is from two years ago, from April 9th, 2017, but it came up on my Facebook feed. Someone posted it or something, you know. No, no. No, it's just. We're, oh, I got. He, his ball got stuck. So hang on a second. I got to get the ball. Hang on. All right. Jackson, how are you doing, Jackson? Woof, 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 woof. <laughs> I don't know if she's got her speakers on, he can hear me or not. <laughs> woof. <laughs> oh, man. <laughs> oh, yeah, I got that big story there. All right, so I'll wait for her to get, come back. Uh, the aliens, um, no, no, we have good, we have good beef here. If, if you want mutilated cattle... Uh, you're going to have to get to head up north a little bit there uh, to uh, Dulce, Dulce, New Mexico, or down south to to, uh, to around the, uh, the the Roswell area. But Moriarty, no, we're good here. Um, we, we don't have mutilated cattle. You, you can go on over to Socorro. Socorro also has some mutilated cattle going on. But, uh, yeah, the, how far am I from Dulce? About uh, 150 miles, maybe? Uh, something, something like that. Uh, I think it's about 150 miles in a straight line. Uh, to actually drive there is probably a little bit further because uh, there's, a, you know, there's no direct path uh, for me to get s straight up to Dulce. But uh, uh, yeah, yeah, I can get there uh, probably two hours should I want to. But of course, getting into that underground base, problem number one. Uh, because there's a ton of military crap out assholes up there. And if you actually did manage to get into Dulce Base, uh, or Dulce, I, I guess you could say it that way. Some people probably do. Uh, but but if I did manage to get into that base, then the aliens would grab hold of you, and that would okay. not that that wouldn't be very good. So you don't you don't no. really want to try and get into Dulce Base because uh, yeah, it's. That wouldn't turn out real well. <laughs> no. Although it would, be don't want to go there. It, it would be interesting right up until the moment that you were no longer living. Right. <laughs> right. 
Yeah, yeah. So uh, anyway, so <laughs> did you did you have your speakers on? Yes, I do. Did so did I do? You, you want I, me to change the headset? No, 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 no. I, I was just wondering if if Jackson could hear me barking at him. Yeah, he could. Oh, he could. Okay. But he didn't. He wasn't really paying attention. I was trying to find that thing for him, and he lost, and I couldn't find it. So. All right. <laughs> yeah, but anyway, um, it he he likes to flip stuff. Like he'll throw stuff out of his mouth. Yeah. You know, and he then it, he doesn't know where it goes. You know. Yeah. Like it goes behind something, or you know, or you know, yeah, you know yeah, who yeah. knows? But anyway, he he's fine now. He's right. fine now. Well, he's got his his toy stick. And it squeaks. So if it squeaks, I apologize. But anyway, I was going to talk about this. Um. Opium-like painkiller alternative can be found growing in your backyard. Sweet. This is from Sunday, April 9, 2017, but it's still relevant. All right, all right. No, it's still relevant, yeah. It's, uh, you know, uh, it's from Natural News, which isn't, you know, Natural News is kind of like Reason. It's one of those hit-and-miss sites to me, you know. Okay. Prim sure. doesn't really like Natural News, but... It's they have some good stuff once in a while. Right, I don't well, just, subscribe to anything, you know, second, what they just, say. Just, but. just a second. Uh, Hansel <laughs> has looked up the distance from my mm -hmm. house to Dolce. Okay, which he, you go figure. 100, you know. 183 miles, or it would take three hours and 60 minutes, according to their time. And it all depends how quick you drive. But uh, um, uh, uh, oh, now I hear me coming out of your speaker. Oh shit! I moved. Oh, okay. Crap. <laughs> I'll put it on a headphone. All right. So, no, I've never actually been up there, but, uh, and, and you spelled Moriarty really weird there. M O O R I E T Y. Dude, really? M O O? And, and no. it was, a, it was no. an E rather no. than an A. It's okay. not correct. <laughs> anyway, but it was also. The program, dude. Also, Cowboy Tech mentioned Superstition Mountains was named that. Why? Well, I don't know about Superstition Mountains, but when out in the. And the Borrego Desert in Southern California, mm -hmm. a place that I used to go riding out there at night, uh, ATV, uh, motorcycle, dune buggy riding. Uh, we'd, we'd go riding out there in the middle of the night. And the place was called Superstition Hills. And <laughs> okay. I saw UFOs out there. Wow, cool. And not only did I see UFOs, but me and a couple of buddies of mine, they went mm -hmm. to this one hill, it's called Blow Sand. And, yeah. and and then we took off from there down down this wash. It's a uh -huh. dry riverbed. Okay. Okay. And we we go hauling ass down up yeah. up up this dry riverbed. And we're riding for a good while. I don't know, maybe an hour or something. And we know we're all, we're we're keep going the same direction because we know where the moon's on the one side of us. So we right. can see the moon. Yeah. And we wind up right back at blow sand. Weird. <laughs> yeah. It was like, where, what, how, how the hell did we get here? You lost, you lost time, basically. Well, no, yeah. we we wound up. I, I don't know what happened, but we, I mean, we, 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 we were going the same direction the whole time, and and we wound up back where we started. So it was like really strange. And did you get turned around somehow and didn't no, know no, it? No, like I said, we saw that the moon was always on the one side of us. Okay. Okay. So we we knew we were kept going in the same direction, right. you know, and it's you know a, a different path than we normally take. Um, okay. For for getting back to the campground area, but mm -hmm. that's all right. I, I mean, it, it's still it's it's on the one side of the dunes. And, right, right. And, we, and we're riding up that way, and zoop, yeah. And I I I could not wouldn't we were all befuddled by that. Yeah, I bet. <laughs> How old were you then? Oh, 24. I don't oh, so know. you were an adult. You were once a kid. Yeah. No. Okay. Cool. It was weird. really strange. It was, it was really good. I, I never had I it. Yeah, but, we, we, but we also saw UFOs that night there. Oh, okay. Hey, that, well, that could explain it right there. At that spot. You guys were Maybe. probably abducted, and they, they, they wiped your memory. And they, they abducted our bikes, too? <laughs> well, probably. <laughs> You know, no, they probably like made you like forget it. You know what I mean? Like you were probably going down the thing, riding your bike. The moon was on the left, and all of a sudden they zapped you, or got you, abducted you, yeah, did whatever, and then they they put you back where they, where you started. <laughs> I don't know. Yeah, I don't I don't know. know. 
<laughs> it was just but, a theory. It's but, just a but, theory. But the UFOs, the UFOs could have been anything because um, where superstition is, it's not very far from Yuma. And, oh, okay. And Yuma has got this huge military base there. Right. So they could have been flying experimental craft. I mean, it's out in the middle of the desert, obviously. Right. So, um... That's true too. Who knows? Yeah, anyway, Who knows? Just a, Freaky. Just a, just a straight. Anyway, back to your uh, back to your. Oh, back. Yeah, yeah. Okay. So the opium like painkiller alternative found growing in your backyard. That can be. And it says if you're suffering from pain of any type, your first impulse might be to reach for a pill. If that is the case, you are not alone. Many people rely on over-the-counter prescription pain medication, but these come with a risk of severe side effects and drug dependency issues. A large segment of our population is popping. These highly addictive meds like candy often masking the problem, often masking the problem, rather than fixing it. Right, which is you know that you, you need to fix the problem. I mean, masking the pain is no way to go. So anyway, um, wild lettuce. Oh, let's see. Wait, wait, wait. Here we go. Many herbs. Did you know that many herbs and spices can treat inflammation and other related conditions that cause acute or chronic pain? Big Pharma, or the legal drug lords, as Natural Blaze calls them, have most of us believing that you, you want the good stuff, you need their drugs. Bullshit. I, you, I say that's you, my interjection. You know, I, I may have this drug in my yard. Okay, and then while they are laughing their way to the bank, millions of people are becoming addicted to these pills, which has led to the current epidemic of opiate, opiate addictions and overdoses. In the United States, it's so, so bad that prescription opiate-related drugs have surpassed gun-related deaths. So opiate-related deaths have surpassed gun-related deaths. Okay. Anyway, wild lettuce is a tall, leafy plant with small yellow buds commonly found in gardens across North America and England, also known as Lactuca varosa, opium lettuce, or bitter lettuce. This medicinal plant has been used in folk medicine as a substitute to opium, hence its name, opium lettuce. While it has been used for centuries, it was in the 19 it was in the 1970s that it started to gain significant popularity, both for pain relief, both for pain relief and recreational purposes. Party. There you go. Opium lettuce's pain relieving and sedative, sedative effects come from the white substance called lactur lactucarium. Good enough. Lactu, yeah, found in the stem and leaves. Just like morphine, <laughs> compounds in the milky substance act directly on the nervous system to lessen the feeling of pain. And like, and like, unlike its name may suggest, this plant does not contain any opiates, opiates and is legal. Patients with Epstein-Barr virus, fibromyalgia, nerve, nerve injury, surgical pain, and inflammation could all benefit from making the switch to this natural remedy. As reported by Ask a Prepper, next to its pain relieving properties, this medicinal plant also works wonders in the treatment of coughs, insomnia, and anxiety. Migraine sufferers claim that they experience few, fewer migraine attacks when they use wild lettuce. Furthermore, it can be very beneficial for asthma patients since opiate medications can cause more ap uh, asthma episodes when they go through opiate withdrawal. The use of opium lettuce instead of opiate drugs could give the same results with, while keeping withdrawal symptoms and additional asthma attacks at bay. So there you go. Indeed. You can purchase it as a dried herb extract or resin um, if you can't find it in your yard. But I did link it there, Grim. Yeah, I see it. I'm looking at it. In, uh, okay, yeah. yeah no, that, that's I, pretty I, cool. I, I, I see it all the time. I, I may have this in my yard as well. I mean, it, it, from the, my understanding, it almost can get you high. I mean, they call it opium lettuce. I mean, what does that tell you? <laughs> you know? Yeah, no. If it, you can find, yeah, if you can find something that's, like, organic and hasn't been sprayed or anything. Right, right. You know? Well, I'll have to uh, investigate and see if and how do you, how do you how do you, you make a tea or whatever. Out it, of it says here. Let's say there are many ways to consume the plant to reap its pain relieving benefits. In the old days, pe people used to steep a herbal tea of dried leaves and stems, or cook the plant in water with a sugar mix until a syrup-like substance is left. While tea remains popular today because of its bitter p taste, many people are also using the dried dried leaves and stems for smoking or vaporizing. 
So you can smoke it. It's like weed, basically. Oh. My understanding is based oh. on that. Okay. So that sounds interesting. Yeah, that's, that's so if neat. you're not living in a place where this medicinal plant grows in the wild and are in a pain in pain, you shouldn't miss out on its pain relieving benefits. You can purchase wild lettuce as a dried herb, extract, or resin. However, these commercial options may disappear in your in your near future. Uh, I can't read. Given its euphoric qualities and recreational use, the U.S. Drug Enforcement uh, Administration is trying to add this natural non-opiate plant to this list of legal substances. Imagine that. Yeah. They're trying to add it to the list, but right now, it isn't. It's not on the list right, right now. So, there you go. Well, if it, I mean, if it's growing that that far and wide, it's going to be pretty hard to Oh, yeah. Do that. Anyway, I mean, um, yeah. that, that kind of fits right into this uh, next article okay. that I have. All right. This here from Modern Healthcare. Um, okay. 161,000... <clears throat> I, guess, uh, 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 I'm yeah, that's water. Okay. I know that feeling. <clears throat> okay. All right. One hundred and sixty-one thousand avoidable deaths occur in hospitals every freaking year. I believe that, and it's it's bullshit. It's terrible. The record. It's just the. It's bad. It's bad statistics there. Right. Well, I, no, these 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 are proper are released. Well, uh, yeah, I'm not saying. I'm just saying yeah. you're on. You, it's not a good place to go. The the estimated 161,250 preventable deaths occur each year in U.S. hospitals, a decline from three years ago, according to the analysis from Leap, Leapfrog Group. The study wow. the study published Wednesday and conducted by researchers at Johns Hopkins. Um, through a, a contract for the LeapFrog Group, found that poor hospital performance on 16 patient safety measures used by LeapFrog to assign hospital grades caused more than 161,000 deaths annually. The findings actually represent a decline from 2016 when John Hopkins did a similar study uh, for LeapFrog in which 206,000 preventable deaths occurred each year. Oh so my God! It was down about fifty thousand or something, but uh, wow, still talking one hundred sixty-one thousand. Since we are cautiously optimistic, we are going to see real change, and that is the good news from the report. But one hundred sixty thousand is still a lot of people. You think it's still a terrible problem? Yeah, uh, that's a lot of people. Uh, the analysis likely underestimates the number of preventable deaths in hospitals since it only evaluated a subset of the safety issues. So there's right. the numbers are actually going to be much higher. Right, exactly. Uh, so the analysis uh, used performance data from 2,620 hospitals assigned in a grade uh, in the most recent iteration of LeapFrog Group's hospital safety grades, which came out in conjunction with the study. All 16 measures used in the study, except for one, are... CMS measures, which is, I don't know what CMS is. Anyway, uh, similar to previous iteration, LeapFrog's newest grades show a wide variety of patient, inpatient uh, study performance across hospitals. Of those 2,620 hospitals assigned a grade of 832 re uh, received an A, 681 got a B, 938 were a C, 160 received a D, and 9 got an F. However, if you look at the details of what it takes to get an A, it's not really much. You can have up to 12% of your patients dying right. and get an A. <laughs> yeah, oh my God. Well, 12 to 20, <laughs> That's not good. 12 to 24 is a B. Um, wow, and, and that's it, crazy. And it goes up by, you know, 24 to 36 is a C. Wow. Uh, 36 to 48 is a D. Oh, and my gosh. More than four. More than <laughs> I four. don't mean to laugh, but really? Yeah. Wow. And, and there's, there's a little map here showing. It's like, oh, that's okay. You're in the percentage. It's like, what? <laughs> oh, my God. Yeah, it's crazy. Uh, and so, uh, <laughs> so well, it's saying, not, all right, so the, you got an A. Well, aren't you terrific? You only killed off 20% of your people. Right. <laughs> Yay. What the hell? It's unbelievable. I don't mean to let, it's, it's so ludicrous that it's funny. You know what I mean? It's like sometimes you just like, you're like, it's so like insane that you, 
the only response is a fucking laugh. Yeah, like, any, anytime you may have to wind up going to a hospital. You, yeah, yeah, you, yeah, you, 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 20% you could end up dead. You're, you're taking your life in your own freaking hands yeah, going to yeah, a hospital. Yeah, you are. Yes, you are. So, I mean, eat that devil's oh my God. lettuce. You know, eat, eat that devil's lettuce out of your yard. Right, yeah, you're better off eating that. Just it, it, They call it the opium lettuce. I mean... Obviously, if it's opium lettuce, it's it, they I mean, they they compare it to morphine. Okay, people. Right. I mean, and it, it's not going to kill you. You can't OD on it. You know. I mean, I don't know if you can OD on it or not. I'm just, don't take my word on that one. But yeah, if it's to, like opium, it can't be bad. Do, do, <laughs> some, do some research uh, on your own about that stuff, but. Right. Do research before you do anything. Yeah, of yeah. course. Uh, you know, we are no expert. I just I just read an article that it was from 2017. You know, I mean, obviously, you're going to want to do more research than just that one article. You're not going to want to just go out there and pick some. Right. You know. Right. But I remember when I used to deal blackjack in Minnesota, when yeah. I first started dealing blackjack, and mm -hmm. there was a lot of Hmong people that would go into the casino. Yeah. Hmong or Asian people, not just Hmong, but Asian people in general. Right. And some of these old women would come in, and they'd be chewing, like, it looked like tobacco, but it wasn't tobacco. And I knew it because they were high. Oh, uh, probably, co probably coca leaves. <laughs> Something like that. Yep. Yeah. And then they'd come in, and they were funny as hell. And you could just tell some of these old ladies too. They'd be just high as hell. You know, and you could see it in their mouth. You know what I mean? Right, right. And I always wonder what the hell that was. They well, I, I know, I know, I know. Down in South America, they chew it. Okay, so it wasn't. It, I knew it wasn't tobacco. I knew it was something to make them high. I figured it was probably cocoa, cocoa leaves. Coca. Coca leaves. Yep. Co cocoa is different. <laughs> I mean, they would be high, dude. Like these eighty-year-old women, you know, yeah. eighty-five. <laughs> They're like high as hell. It's like holy <laughs> shit. I hope I can do that when I'm your age. Hell yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Why not when you're that age, right? Absolutely. I mean, who gives a shit? <laughs> At that point, right? Yeah, no doubt, no doubt. Yeah, and so anyway, I just want to say, speaking of that, 85, Tim Conway died. Yeah, I saw that. And he was a very funny guy. I mean, I'm he old school, so, so I'm probably giving away my age here a little bit. He, but he, he was, he was, remember, he was in Cannonball Run, wasn't he? What? He was in Cannonball Run, wasn't he? I believe so, and but before that, he was like on the Carol Burnett show as a regular. Before right, that, he right. was in McHale's Navy. But very funny. What I I got to know him from the Carol Burnett show. Yeah. So because that's my age generation, my generation or whatever. But um, very funny man. If you guys want to look him up, he's very some very funny clips were, especially on the Carol Burnett show. It was like a live show. Yeah. With like a studio audience, like a real audience there and everything. Mm -hmm. And so they're doing this live, and it's just like on Saturday Night Live kind of like it's like that you know right and some of the time he would like crack the other people up that he was working with like not meaning to but they he was so funny that you know what i mean you know how it happens sometimes when they're doing that live stuff and someone just starts getting the giggles or something and gets yeah. you know what i mean sure sure because, yeah it, it, there's so many situations i loved it when he did the um when carol burnett played his secretary and he was the boss and she was supposed to be a typist or whatever. Yeah. And she was like in, you know, not adequate or inept, inept at it, right? All right. And um, that, that's one of the funniest clips ever when they did that skit. Okay. Um. So anyway, look him up if you guys, for you guys younger people, you probably don't know who the hell he is. Yeah. Mrs. Wiggins. Mrs. Wiggins. Look that up. <laughs> Hang on, let me get, let me get somebody. All right. Okay, let's just do this one. Let's Oof. see. Let's get a good one. This is a, this is six minutes. Well, hey on. This is six minutes, but you don't have to play the whole thing, bro. All right. Hang on, let me find a better one. Sorry. Okay. <laughs> I should have been uh, more prepared on that. Well, I'll tell, you what. I'll, tell you what. Be, I'll tell you what. I'll tell you what. I'll tell you what. I'm, I'm going to do, do a set, and then you sit 
set me up for the next. For yeah. The next okay. Day. We'll find. I'll find a good one. Yeah. Just just request it, and, and then it'll be in there. Yeah. Yeah. That sounds good. That'll work. All right. I just yeah. I didn't prepare. I'm trying to prepare. That's all right. That's all right. So. All right. All right, we are once again going to kick it off with a Cowboy Tech request. Ooh. So, uh, enjoy this. Okay. Oh, yeah, how about that, man? <laughs> it's another track there by the Small Town Titans. Um uh, uh, which uh, yeah, they're a good band. I I don't really know much about it, but I've listened to a few of their songs and they, and they sound pretty good. Anyway, they're, they're covering Spoonman there, Soundgarden Spoonman. Um, so Small Town Titans, look them up there on the YouTube's. Before that, we had a Judge Dread slash Hansel request, Corey Hart sunglasses at night, and we kicked it off with the Cowboy Tech request, Hank Williams Jr. doing Country Boys Can Survive. <laughs> yep. Yep. <laughs> oh boy. So I did find some Tim Conway clips. Yeah, yeah, I got them here. All right, cool. Yeah, he was funny. On that one from 1970, I've seen it before, but it's been a long time since I've seen it. It's really funny. It's pretty good. Right. I mean, okay. It's from 70, so you know it's not going to be all uh, fucking big tits and all that kind. Of, it's just funny. You know, right. He was a funny guy. Right, right. So, suck it if you don't like it. <laughs> <laughs> suck it if you do. <laughs> right. Anyway, um, just I just remember watching him on the Carol, Carol Burnett show, and then it was, it was always funny to see if he could crack crack up his castmates. Yeah. You know, by his antics while they're doing the skit. That's always really funny. Yeah, I kind of remember the show. My sister used to watch those kind of shows. Yeah, yeah. She, she liked all It was that. a variety show. It was a Carol Burnett show. Like, Carol Burnett could sing really good, and she was really funny. She was kind of like Lucille Ball-like. Right, right. You know, and I really like both. I love Lucille Ball, because I grew up watching, like, I Love Lucy. It was reruns, but I grew up watching that, those shows. Yeah. And I've been a huge fan of Lucille Ball since, like, I was, like, three. Which, so we're talking 50 years, you know. <laughs> and then Carol Burnett reminds me of Lucille Ball, like, because they're, like, physical, funny. You know, oh. not just standing up there and talking. They have the physical antics, antics that go with it. And they're both redheads, right? Right, they're both redheads. And Carol Burnett was just really funny, man. I mean, and she had this thing that she did at the end of her show where... She'd sing the same song. I'm so glad we had this time together. And then she'd like at the end she'd like tug on her ear, her earlobe, and that was like her signature move to do, you right. know, for leaving the show. And she just, you know, my parents didn't get along very well. It was just like comic relief for me. You know what I'm saying? Right. Like TV, TV shows like that. You know, like I remember watching the Sunny and Cher show. I remember that being my favorite show. Yeah. At one time, <laughs> which was a similar type show, a variety show, a singing and dancing and, you know, stuff like that, right? Right, right. So, like, I wanted to be on Broadway. That was one of my dreams as a kid, as a small kid. Okay. I wanted to be, like, a singer and a dancer. Uh, all right. I did. <laughs> it didn't happen. That's fine. <laughs> it's fine. But, I mean, I still am kind of like a singer and a dancer, but not, like, you know, on Broadway level or anything, but all right, I got a couple of stories I want to cover okay, real quick okay, here. Let's do it. Let's do it. First one is kind of a follow up to something we covered before. Okay. Uh, you remember the uh, two billion dollar uh, lawsuit that uh, Bear Monsanto lost? Yes. Yes. Correct. Right. Yeah. Okay. Well, um, they are going to appeal, obviously, of course. Well, yeah. Imagine okay. that. So this article posted up on RT today. Um, Bear bets on silver bullet defense in Monsanto Roundup cancer litigation. So it, what, what the silver bullet defense is, is they believe they're exempt from any kind of lawsuits against them due to uh, something which the EPA did and which uh, uh, Congress passed pretty much exempting them. From, from any kind of lawsuits against them. Um, however, 
there was another lawsuit that happened. Uh, and by the way, the EPA said, "Oh no, no, no! Roundup is fine. Glyphosate, glyphosate is just fine. Um, it doesn't. It does not. Not a carcinogen." The EPA, your Environmental Protection Agency, says this about that stuff. When every other country in the world, well, about every other country, most other countries in the world have already deemed um, uh, Roundup uh, and glyphosate as a carcinogen, your EPA, your government of your United States uh, went ahead and said, no, 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 it's fine, it's good because, well, they, they pretty much own us. Um, but under, under the silver bullet defense, uh, they believe that they are going to get away with this. However, there was another... Of course they do. Yeah, of course, yeah. There was another um, Supreme Court ruling in 2005 that the EPA's approval of a product does not necessarily bar state law claims. Uh, so the experts also said in the ruling that Bates versus Dow AgroSciences, which was the the lawsuit against Dow rather than rather than uh, Bear uh, Monsanto at that point, uh, gave right. bro gives broad leeway to juries to decide if such claims should proceed. And the jury obviously decided, yes, this claim not only should proceed, but it should, should proceed at a $2 billion penalty. Uh, the judges in the three roundup cases have gone to trial against Monsanto, all dismissed the company's preemption. So I, I don't know that, uh, that Bayer's really got a, a leg to stand on here. As far as this goes, but no, uh, I don't think they do. They well, shouldn't. I mean, unless they, they can sidestep it or hire the right people and pay enough money. Well, bear, bear, know, you know, they're gonna have to get some politician to fucking speak out on their behalf. I don't know. I don't know what you can do. Yeah, but bear they have their tricks, I'm sure. But bear, bear is much bigger than than Dow. So yes, um, and yes, not, they not, are. Bear's and, huge. And, well, and Dow's not small by any stretch of the imagination. But uh, I, I, this is obviously, well, of course, we will keep an eye on what goes on there. Um, but it says on Monday, U.S. jury awarded $2 billion in punitive damages to a California couple after concluding that Roundup weed killer caused their cancer. It doesn't say See, they're trying to get out of it. They're it, still trying to fucking say no, no, no. It's like, fuck you. Right. It's been proven. This, you, 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 then they don't care. They don't care. A anyway, it doesn't say that it might have caused their cancer. It could be a component into something that caused their... No, it says, right. Monsanto caused their... I mean, the, it the, caused the, the Roundup it's, it caused, caused the cancer. It. It's a direct correlation. Right. And this was the third time since August 2018, last, last August, that a U.S. jury has found glyphosate to be a cause of cancer. So, right. Hello. <laughs> Hello. Bear is currently to, see. Here's an example. They're trying to say one thing when the opposite is true. You can see it. it, it does bear, just this one thing. But, and the but, thing about this is, though, they're still selling it in the store. Yeah. They're still making the shit. Right. It's not like they've been ordered to stop making it. No, it's not like, at all. You know, it's like, come on, well, let's go further and order them to stop making the fucking shit. Right. Causing cancer for crying out loud. A anyway, it says. This is the third time since August 2018 the U.S. jury has found glyphosate to be the cause of cancer. Bayer is currently facing a total of 11,200 cases over Roundup and its active ingredient glyphosate, which is the right. most popular weed killer in the U.S. Oh, my God. It's disgusting. That's because <laughs> it's been forced on us. It's because it's been okayed by the FDA or whatever. Yeah, so. And it's like, oh, my God. It, see, it's another insidious way that they've used to cause people to get cancer. And, and, I, and I, I hope the whole, you know, bear took on Monsanto. But then a, they turn around and they blame it on your lifestyle. Right. So, oh, uh, yeah. It's because you smoke cigarettes. I, I hope bear it's dies because in a... you did this. It's, it's like, fuck you, dude. No, I breathed the air when my neighbor sprayed that shit. Right. You know what I mean? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Or yeah. when I sprayed the shit because you told me it was okay to spray the shit. Right. Right. Anyway. Because so... you okay? It's on the market. It's on the shelf at Walmart. It's on the shelf at fucking Ace Hardware. Anyway, I, I, hope, you know? bear, I hope bear dies in a fire. But uh, any, anyway... um. One more little quick note here that I found good and interesting. Um, South Korean government planning Linux migration as Windows 7 support ends. 
uh, this is a good thing. Good. If, if we can get yes, more, more, more countries and companies to head out of the Windows arena and into the Linux arena, that will be terrific. Uh, Says with just seven more months of support left for Windows 7, it, it ends in January. Uh, the South Korean government is planning to migrate to Linux, according to the Korean Herald, which notes the Interior Ministry will begin test running Linux on its PCs if no security issues arise, which of course they won't because Linux is far more secure than Windows ever could hope to be. Uh, uh, Linux systems will be introduced within the government. The Herald quotes the Interior, Interior Ministry as indicating the transition to Linux and the purchase of new PCs would cost about $780 billion or $655 million, $780 billion won, um, $655 million. Anyway, there's a link here in, uh, inside this, this post uh, on Slashdot that uh, you can watch in this guy talking all about the various servers, the server platforms uh, that you might want to use if you're a, a Linux person and you want to use Linux, and how easy it is to migrate over. And, and how much better the, the system would be. So, um, hooray, hooray, that's good news. Uh, it, anything that, that gets more countries and more companies to switch off of Windows-based systems is a freaking bonus. Yes, okay. it is. It's a bonus. If you can get off of it, do it. Um, I'm on it, but well, I know, that's but just because to make broadcasting capabilities easier, I actually should partition this one and be Linux capable. Linux capable, because um, seriously, if you're on, if you're like familiar, unfamiliar, and you're just like, oh my god, no, what's Linux? I'm not familiar, and you get afraid. Not the way to be, dude. No, not because the way to be. it's basically the same. I mean, depending on what what desktop you want to choose, right? It, Pick one that looks basically just like fucking Windows. Oh, well, anyway, go, I mean, go. It's not like rocket science to learn a new operating system. It really is not. Anyway, I mean, go, seriously. Go to that link and then follow it to the next link over and watch the little video. Right, and right. You'll and you'll it. see. Yep. All right, well, we got to do our last set here, so. Okay, let's do that. And get ready to laugh. Yes, please do. It's good for you to do that. Yeah. Like medicine. Oh, yeah, there you go. You got your uh, Lark and Poe jamming in the van doing the black better. So uh, that's, that's fun stuff, always fun stuff. Uh, anyway, so uh, great Lark and Poe there. Uh, before that, we had a couple of clips, Tim Conway on the Carol Burnett show, I guess. Um, I can't really tell if that second one was the Carol Burnett or not, but um, it was on some show. Anyway, rest in peace, Mr. Conway. Yeah, Thanks for all do. the yucks. Yeah, yeah. Hey man. Yeah, man. Um, <laughs> anyway, that's going to wrap it up. Uh, check yep. the schedule for all the shows. Uh, we know Dark Tables tomorrow. I'm Sunday. Hal yep. Sunday. I'll be back Monday, blah, blah, blah. Check the schedule. Uh, thanks Great. to everybody here at Real Liberty Media tuning in and listening to us do our whatever it is we do mm -hmm. week after week. <laughs> well, you got to be here next Friday? Uh, what date is it? Uh, no, I will not be here. 24? I will not be here next Friday. Yeah, okay, where are you going? Uh, Revival Festival. Revival. You betcha, baby. All right, all right. Oh, the Winds Harmony. Be good. Wind, wind, what? Winds Harmony. Next week, that weekend. Next weekend. Oh, that is, that is next week. Yep, yep. At Harmony Park Revival at Harmony Park. Okay, I'm taking next Friday off too, guys. All right, then. So no freakers, no balls to the wall either. You yep. Know. Yep, You're on your own next Friday. That's you, right. you can do it. You can handle it. I'm It'll sure you fine. can. <laughs> everybody have Take a, a deep breath and carry on. Yeah. Anyway, have a great weekend, everybody. Uh, yeah, everyone have a kick-ass weekend. Thank you for tuning in. That's right. Peace. Peace.